Lisa from Mobile, Alabama, WBHY is the station. Hello there. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm doing um, not so good right now. Really? Why? Why not? What's going on? Well, uh, my um, ex um, that we recently divorced um, um, remarried this past weekend to the girl he cheated on me with. Mm. Um Sorry. And uh, mm. all the while, he was telling me uh, the day before they got married that he was in love with me and, you know, was still in love with me and, you know, and um, that he didn't tell me he was going to marry her. He's, uh, and, he's, he's quite a, a horrible uh, human being when it comes to you, isn't he? Well, yes. When it comes yes. to truth and honesty yeah. and integrity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for 20 he, years, he, he cheated years. on you. He cheated on you. Years, wow. Cheated on you, and then he doesn't even allow you to go off and properly grieve because he he wants to still have He's you. He's holding attached. on to you. Yeah. yeah, that's really sad. Selfish. Yeah. It's typical. I though. heard heard this through the grapevine, and um, what well, I guess I'm confused why I heard so bad because it, I don't want him. I don't want him bad because he did treat me so bad. Let me tell you why it uh, why it, it's hurting so badly. Okay. Because you haven't grieved the loss of him. Right. He hasn't allowed you to do that. He's given you false hope. And so rather than on a day where you would feel sad and angry, uh, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, maybe he's made some changes here. Maybe we'll get back together. Right. It'll be good. So, so he's cut off the natural grieving process that you need mm -hmm. to go through so that when you hear him getting married, you're not sad for you. You're sad right. for her, the person that he's <laughs> marrying. There's the one you you just pity right. her. So yeah, yeah, because he was um, actually I had to get a restraining order against him because um, I didn't know at the time he was cheating on me. I thought I just noticed the phone number that he on his phone bill that he was calling, and more than he called me, and he said it was his friend. But then after um, we you know, got divorced, he revealed her name and that my son, that was the phone number that was on my son's cell phone one time, and I realized that all along for like two years he had been cheating yeah. on okay. me. Okay, so, yeah. so uh, is there a specific question for us? Because I think we um, get the picture. I just, yeah, I just uh, want to know like what I should do as far as like, because our son was hospitalized twice recently due to major depression. How old is and, your son? Uh, he's 19. 19. And uh, wow. we have a lot of issues, and we actually, that's the reason we, you know, I started talking to him again is um, because he's our son, you know, and, and then he kind of took advantage of that. Yes, he did, started, didn't he? Yeah. And, okay. Um, and now I don't know what to do. Do, right. do I talk to him anymore? Do I just, All right. you know, I... Well, let us, let us give you some help. Well, one, one of the things that's difficult, Lisa, is you've had ongoing contact because of that, which then doesn't, and that too doesn't allow you to grieve. The fact that he deceived you uh, for two yeah. years doesn't allow you to grieve, and the fact that, you, you know, the issues with your son uh, and, and the contact you have uh, also keeps, you know, everything kind of uh, alive. Somehow you gotta you gotta get him out of your life, out of your head, out of your mind, and that means you gotta get him out of your life for a while. And yeah. I would only communicate anything about your son. Does he live with you, your son? Yes, yeah. yes, sir. Okay, so the only thing I would do is I would email him information about your son. I wouldn't talk to him on the phone, uh, and and just say, you know, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to have any kind of physical contact with you. I want to just deal with you directly through email for a while uh, and, I'll, and, and only in relationship to our son. And you set the boundary and you hold to that boundary because that's going to help you grieve. The grieving is going to involve being angry with him and that's not going to be easy for you it sounds like because you're caught up in a lot of sadness but somehow you've got to protest his lack of integrity, his dishonesty, his leading you on, and and, and all of that. You got to protest that with, and, and that means you've got to feel some anger about yeah. that, and you've got to have somebody well, you do that with, some trusted friends that will mm -hmm. say, yes, you have a right to that. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys are talking about her not grieving. Well, part of it too is that there have been multiple losses along the way, Lisa. Yeah. 
you know, not all was revealed. And so each time there's yeah. a new loss and a new betrayal, exactly. you know, it stirs it up again. And so yeah. it can feel like, gosh, I've been going on and on forever. Aren't I over this yet? Well, you may be over the initial, but you're not over the last 10 hurts. Right. And, and everything is a reminder, you know, as, you're, as you've gone through a divorce, of the loss. It's not just the loss of him. It's the loss of your life. You said right. 21 years, and now with your son going through this, the loss of a partner to really help you walk okay. through this. So it, how does a person grieve? That's a big question. I get well, everywhere well, I go, people say, how do you grieve? The, the two facets of grieving mm -hmm. that I talk about all the time, you've got to have anger, which is a protest against the loss, and sadness over what was lost. And, you know, when you've been married 20 years, that process can take you, I, I remember early research on this, it can take you four to five years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to really grieve that. And that grieving started when, when he withdrew from you and became unfaithful. So you've been at it for maybe a year or two, lightly. You, you've got a couple of more years to go with that. So don't try to rush through it, Lisa. You rush through it, and, and it, that hurts you. That's not good for you physically as well as emotionally. So, uh, But you've got to have that support system. You've got to have those people right. around you mm -hmm. that give you the permission to be sad and then point out to you why you have a right to be angry and upset over it. And I think the minimal contact is really good to talk to him as little as possible. And by you putting things in writing, in a sense that forces him to put things in writing, which is good to have that accountability. Mm. And you yeah. may find that he won't contact you as much. But what you don't want to become is the other woman now. Now that he's married to yeah, the new it wife, can flip -flop, yeah. you know, well, it can flip flop. I so. would never do that. Well, <laughs> you, you might not do it knowingly. Because yeah, you know, and it if, wouldn't if mean that you become sexually yes, involved with right. him again. It, it, it just, just means, means you become every, emotionally. Every time I don't want to be emotionally no. involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, okay. you know, it, it does happen every time uh, he has a little spout with, spat with her. All of a sudden, I he's know. calling about his son, yeah. and that, well, that's, that's well, easy that's to do. That's absolutely right. And so it, let him suffer the consequences of his choice. Yeah, and it sounds like he has never let go of you. Mm -hmm. Right. And and that's typical of an affair situation. The mm -hmm. guy when a guy gets into the affair, he really doesn't want to lose his wife. He just wants to he play wants around both. on the side. He <laughs> wants both. And then you know, it sounds like you took you set the limit, you you drew the line and he didn't like that. So yeah, he's he's still emotionally attached to you, as weird as that sounds, and he'll try and so be prepared. Don't mm -hmm. let him do it. Yeah. What's a good uh, resource for her do you think would be good? I think boundaries and forgiving the unforgivable. Okay, we got that coming your way.